have with me in the future. No. When it comes to domestic violence, it's a stigma that's placed there. A lot of times we feel like it's the woman's fault that the man is lashing out at her. They feel like maybe she's being disrespectful. Sometimes it's insecurity in the man. Sometimes the woman hasn't done anything. Sometimes it is women that are pushing men's buttons and things of that nature. You have faced many times of domestic violence in the past. And I just want to give you an opportunity, you know, to just shed some light on those particular situations. You don't have to go in detail. I know you have your book on the way. And people, please subscribe. And like the Facebook page, also a follow on Instagram. But just on your situation with domestic violence, could you just speak on and just shed, shed a little bit of light on that dark subject? Well, I can definitely hear the passion in your question. Um, the way how I view domestic violence, and I will get into some personal situations with that, but the way how I view domestic violence in general is not that it's just targeted. Uh, from a male to a woman, there are many forms of domestic violence. Sometimes women become physically violent towards men. And even in same-sex partnerships, there could be female-to-female -female violence as well as male-to-male -male violence. So once again, as I stated earlier, my message is about empowering everyone. So I'm definitely not a male basher. My domestic violence was experienced through the hands of a male partner. Um, but I will just speak on domestic violence. In general, um, kind of on a male partner, or has it been more than one male partner? It's been more than it's been more than one male partner, but the male partner that sticks out the most for me was the one in which I almost lost my life to. The one in which had no regard whatsoever for the fact that I had my children and the home with me is the male partner that sticks out the most in my mind. I understand that. I understand that, yes, ma'am. But I'm glad that you brought up that point about plural because a lot of times we can have certain characteristics about ourselves that attract people that want to be controlling or attract people that have some insecurities that they have not worked out on their own. And so, therefore, we become that sounding board, that punching board for them to release those anger issues and those anxiety issues. But when a person is driving you mm -hmm. down that highway to hell, mm -hmm. how do you make that person pull over and let you out of that car? How do you get out of that situation? Prayer helped me with a lot. But I believe that what helped me to really get out of that situation was when I realized that my children were being affected and impacted by seeing that mother hit, by seeing that mother push, um, spin on, slap, uh, by hearing that mother be disrespected, by hearing that mother be put down. I think that was the opening point, the awakening point for me to be like, you know, you deserve better than this. At that time, I was working on my bachelor's degree and I had to say to myself, wow, my God, um, here you are, you are a magna cum laude at Grand Rapids State University, you are really um, getting your schoolwork and you're really excelling, but do you want to be able to actually do something with the education you're getting or do you want to be dead? And I think that the driving force for me was that I had to look at the bigger picture. It had to be bigger than love or it had to be bigger than some feelings that I owed this person something because they had told me about you know, their past experiences and they had told me about their childhood and development and all the hurts and pains that they had. I can't save a person without first saving myself and saving my children. So to answer your question, when you're going through a situation like that, a similar situation, you have to look at the bigger picture. You have to look at your children. You have to look at, wow, what messages am I sending to my children? Am I saying mm. to them that it's okay for a person to put you down on a daily basis? And as you so eloquently put that, recidivism or cycles because at the end of the day we learn through our behaviors and interactions with others and who do who's our first teacher who are our first teachers our parents and the background the family that we come up in so if i'm communicating the message that it's okay for this to happen what am i telling my daughters what am i telling my sons 
So in many ways, even as a victim, which I do not label myself as a victim now, I'm a survivor. But at that time, as being a victim, oh. you have to look at the fact that, wow, I'm not only allowing myself to be victimized, but I'm allowing my children to be victimized. They're observing, they're watching, they're learning. They're seeing where I'm trying to put on this mask, like everything is okay, but in actuality, I'm really hurting on the inside. And one thing I've learned about domestic violence, too, is it's not always the physical aspect. A lot of times the emotional and mental. When you hear somebody over and over tell you nobody else is ever going to want you, you know, you're Abuse. not worth yeah. anything, you know, I own you. If I can't have you, nobody else can have you. When you go into those type of things, it's so psychological in nature because you actually start believing and internalizing those messages. Yeah. So I would say self-esteem has a big issue to play with it too because for years I suffered with low self-esteem um, and I suffered from depression and all of those things. So once you begin to first love yourself and you begin to identify what you want and what you need out of life, it makes it easier um, when you're approaching relationships to where you can see those red flags and those signs and signals that a person may not be equally yoked to you. Um, and goes back to background, like my brother was just saying, I was always brought up not to judge people and all of that kind of stuff. You want to treat everybody the same way you want to be treated. But the lesson that I learned from that is <laughs> that everybody is not brought up like you're brought up. So when you're looking at it like, okay, I'm trying to help this person or this person has confided in me some deep, dark secrets that really hurt them and I don't want to leave because I feel like if I leave, I'm just going to be another person that abandons them. You have to first realize that, hey, I have a bigger pur purpose in life to serve than to be somebody's punching bag or to be somebody for somebody to just put down.